Shalom, brothers and sisters. Grace be unto you in peace from Yahuwah the Father and Yahusha the Messiah, his son. This is Brother David coming to you again to bring you forgeries in the Bible. We're reading from John chapter 3. Our text is verse 16, and this is part 2. Okay, now just from what we learned so far, something's wrong with verse 16. Now we have to investigate what is wrong and what the father had to say about who he loved. Because they said, for God so loved the world. Now, I want you to remember what we just learned about typology, portraits, types, figures. All through the Bible, you will see this. There's always parallels in the Old Testament that tells you of what the New Testament type would look like. This is what the Father has left for us so that they cannot fool us anymore. Do you see that the Messiah told you, hey, go back, check out Moses and see about these fiery serpents and see when they lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. We saw that. We know it's a parallel, a type, a portrait, a figure of what the Messiah would do. Now it's led us up to verse 16. For God so loved the world. Let's see what the master of the universe has to say about this. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in Yahuwah with an everlasting salvation. Is this the world? It's the only thing you're going to see. The only people he came to save was Israel. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. He said only Israel is going to be saved. So who's the world? Israel, brothers and sisters. No matter how the Europeans try to cover it up and make this thing for everyone instead of it being exclusively for Israel, you shall see the error if you study, if you follow the tools that you've learned. Let's look at another. Malachi chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. Now remember, we want to see if God so loved the world. The Burden of the Word of Yahuwah to Israel by Malachi. 2. I have loved you. Who did he love? They just told you who this book was addressed to. Israel. I have loved you. Who did he love? Israel. Who said it? Yahuwah. The master of the universe has told you exactly who he loves. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Listen to what the master of the universe says. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Saith Yahuwah. Yet I loved Jacob. Who does he love? Jacob whose name was changed to Yazrael. He placed his name upon Jacob. Verse 3. And I hated Esau. Okay, this kills your for God so loved the world doctrine, doesn't it? Because if he loves the world, he loves everyone. If you exclude one person, he does not love everyone anymore, right? And laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Hold it. His heritage, all of the seed that came out of his loins, they are under judgment, brothers and sisters. He hates them also. Verse 4, whereas Edom saith, look what they said, we are impoverished, but we, pronoun, talking about the people of Edom, not one singular, this is plural, we will return and build the desolate places. So he's talking about those Edomites that are going to come back to the land and decide they're going to build the desolate places. But look at what the master of the universe says. 
Thus saith Yahuwah of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom Yahuwah have indignation forever. So he hates them. He doesn't love everyone. John 3.16 is in error because it says, For God so loved the world. That is now a lie, isn't it, brothers and sisters? Verse 5, And your eyes shall see, and ye shall say, Yahuwah will be magnified from the border of Israel. Let's look at another. Joel chapter 2, verse 27. I'm, I have to just show you evidence. That's all I'm going to show you. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. Is he in the midst of the world? The Africans, the Asians, the Europeans. And that I am Yahuwah, your mighty one. Your is a pronoun. Who does it point back to? Israel. So he is the mighty one of Israel only. And look what it says next, just so that we can define it. And none else, that means no one else. And my people, who is his people, the children of Israel, shall never be ashamed. Did he say the world shall never be ashamed? He only points to one group of people over and over and over again. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7 to 9. Yahuwah did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. So he didn't choose us because of numbers. Look at verse 8, why he chose us. But because Yahuwah loved you. He's talking about you, brothers and sisters. You are the children of Israel that have been scattered all over the earth. And because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, have Yahuwah brought you out with a mighty hand. He swear, brothers and sisters, we serve the God that cannot lie. And his integrity is at stake. And redeemed you out of the house of a bondman from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. In case you were confused and you didn't know who these people are that he loved, he told you where he brought them from, from Egypt, from the house of bondage. Verse 9, Know therefore that Yahuwah thy mighty one, he is the mighty one, the faithful mighty one, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. So even though he loves you, brothers and sisters, his promises, they have to have reciprocation from you. You have to participate. If he loves you, he will give you all of these promises. If you love him, you will keep his commandments. First Kings chapter 10, verse 9. This passage is speaking about Solomon. Again, brothers and sisters, you have to read everything that surrounds it so that you can be sure for yourself. Read context. No one is going to tell you to do the things that I'm telling you to do. Do you know why? Because they never studied in the first place. They never read the context. They're just creating doctrines and following people that they have heard before. We're different. We read it all. We check it out. We go line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Blessed be Yahuwah thy mighty one, which delighted in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel. Remember, it's talking about Solomon. Because Yahuwah loved is 
Ra-yel forever. Therefore made he thee king to do judgment and justice. Where, where's the world? Yahuwah only loves Israel. And did he said, is it going to be temporary? Like the Muslims say, they cut, he cut Israel off and destroyed them utterly, never to return again. That is the doctrine that the Muslims speak. The Europeans, well, they don't have that doctrine, but they have supplanted Israel by the church. They've placed themselves in Israel. They said that they are spiritual Israel, which you cannot find it in the Bible. Israel is a bloodline, a seed that comes from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The only people that he said he loved is Israel, and it is not temporal, but it is forever. Something's wrong, right? <laughs> I'm amazed. I mean, I'm blown away. I just don't understand. Where did they get this from? Well, we have to go a little deeper, investigate this just a little bit more. We heard what the father said. The father said he loves Israel. Now, listen to me. I only showed you a very small portion of what he said in the Old Testament. There are hundreds of scriptures that tells of his love for his people, the people, my people, Israel. And that's the only one whom he's placed his affections. Continue to part three.